Hey guys, and welcome to yet another edition to my Habits Of series, where I break down the tendencies and approaches of the greatest guitar players in the universe. I've gone in depth on players like Jimi Hendrix, Stevie Ray Vaughan, Steve Vai, Joe Satriani, Eddie Van Halen, John Mayer, and many others, and today we have Mark Tremonti. That is the man we are checking out today. And in these habits lessons, I try and dial in a nice tone to sort of emulate the guitar player, but that's about it. I'm not necessarily chasing the tone of these players. It's more about how their guitar playing can integrate into your own guitar playing, maybe some tendencies or habits that they have that you can take and put your own spin on it. And that I think is the most valuable way to analyze guitar players, not necessarily break down exact licks, but moreover, take those licks and figure out why they came to be and maybe adapt that mindset into your musicality. So with all that said, I do have one very special piece of gear that I'll be using that actually is kind of an essential part of Mark Tremonti's sound, and that is the wah pedal. This is the brand new Mark Tremonti wah pedal from Morley, and you can check out the link in the description if you would like to get your own that has the artwork from A Dying Machine, which is Mark Tremonti's new album. This is a smaller iteration of a pre-existing Tremonti wah pedal made by Morley, as you can see here. I honestly couldn't really tell a difference between the two wahs. I am going with the bigger version today just because I want to keep that artwork version special and pristine. But rest assured, you can't go wrong with either pedal. So. Let's get to Mark's habits, and the way I'm going to start this out is to talk about tuning first, because the sort of tunings that Mark uses, and by the way, I've actually met Mark before, so I feel like I'm on a first name basis with him, so I'm just gonna be calling him Mark for this lesson. Uh, so, I am in drop C sharp, or drop D flat, however you wanna look at it. <laughs> And the reason that's important is not just because it obviously lends itself to a little bit heavier sound overall, but it also allows for certain mannerisms, not only among Mark's playing, but players of the genre of like hard rock and metal. It's when the tension of the string is a little bit less, then you have the tendency to have a bit more aggressive vibrato sound. So just for example, here's what I'm talking about. This vibrato would be sort of like a classic rock sound, I would say. Mark might do something more like this. You hear how there's a bit more waver, and I think that's not only his personal taste, but it has to do with the tension of the strings being a little bit loose. So, especially on the heavy strings, it can get really nasty. <laughs> And that vibrato doesn't just happen on the low strings, it can happen obviously on the higher strings. Mark is known for a really just classic guitar hero sound, at least to me. He just always has that right blend of pentatonic and natural minor and a couple harmonic minor or however you want to label the notes. He primarily uses his ear, I would say, to approach his songwriting and compositions. But he does this sort of bend from nowhere that is really a, a very metal sound. So say we have some reverb and delay on and that is sort of washing over the lead sound that we're playing with. He'll be playing some sort of flurry of notes and then he'll start to bend a note kind of anticipating where the bend is happening. So instead of really bending on a downbeat, he'll sort of anticipate like a dotted 16th anticipation of the downbeat with a bend. And it sort of just blooms out uh, using the wah to achieve this amazing guitar hero majestic sound. Here's what I'm talking about. <laughs> So again, Mark does it a little bit differently than that, but the point is with these habits lessons, it's to take the idea and apply it to your own playing and kind of 
infuse your own style with it. So anticipating bends with a nice saturated overdrive and wah, delay, reverb, washy sound. Who doesn't love that? I wanna talk about Mark's favored intervals, if you will. I don't think this is necessarily a habit of Mark's, but anytime I hear octaves and especially the use of the major third in a sort of rock context. So it just seems like a patented Tremonti-ism. What I mean by that is taking a major third of D, which is F sharp. Doesn't that just sound like Mark Tremonti? Uh, so maybe he would try something like this. So maybe I'm over embellishing a little bit, but I really think that is a habit of Tremonti's is that sort of kind of ethereal sound that he goes for, especially in his choruses, uh, examining his writing style between, you know, Creed in the early days and then Alter Bridge and now his solo stuff with Tremonti. It is definitely apparent to me that he has a hard rock, uh, love for hard rock, but also a love for really kind of beautiful harmony. So I think the major third is kind of the most happy uh, emotion that you can feel in music. And he definitely takes advantage of that even when most of his songs are sort of in a minor tonality. So that is one thing to keep in mind. As far as the scales that he likes to go for, uh, in his lead guitar playing, I would say he is primarily a pentatonic and natural minor uh, driven player. He does a lot of super shreddy stuff in those different boxes and patterns. Um, but he also takes notes that I sort of alluded to earlier. Uh, he uses his ear a lot. And I actually had the chance to hang out with Mark for a few minutes at the last NAMM show and talk to him about his songwriting. He basically told me that he likes to write music by ear and hear the things in his head and then figure them out on the guitar neck, which I think we can all relate to that. And it seems to translate not only from his rhythm guitar playing, but also to his lead guitar playing. So for example, here is the D minor pentatonic scale. <laughs> And you can add in those natural minor flavors. And if you want to, you can try some harmonic minor stuff that actually utilizes the major third if you wanted to look at it uh, as like a Phrygian dominant sound. So those are just some, you know, off the cuff notes. But anyways, let's say Mark is composing a lick and it's just something simple but cool sounding like this. He might try something that doesn't necessarily fit in the harmony, but his attitude and the aggression and the way his technique lends itself to just everything kind of sounds awesome, <laughs> no matter the notes he's playing. Uh, he may throw in something that's like a little bit of a rub. Maybe something like this. Or something like. So that is sort of the style of Mark Tremonti is he has his foundation in, you know, what pretty much every guitar player has their foundation is, the, the pentatonic and natural minor, but he'll use his ear to just sort of switch out notes, achieve that Tremonti feel that I think is very apparent when you hear his guitar playing, you know it's Mark playing. So I think uh, to kind of put a bow on this topic, I think the best thing for you to do to integrate this stuff is learn your different scale shapes all the way up the neck, not just root position. So you should be able to ascend from the base of the neck all the way up to the top. Uh, in any scale really, but you can just start with the pentatonic. And 
I would say like the bag of tricks, if you want to call it that, uh, for Tremonti. He definitely favors alternate picking and legato, a sort of blend between those two. The real trick with legato is the pinky, <laughs> honestly, making the coordination between your pinky and ring finger happen strongly uh, is the best way to kind of achieve any sort of nice, smooth legato sound. So this is going to be a cool lick for you if you want to just strengthen your legato. <laughs> So that's sort of a Lydian thing, I would say. And then a slide from 10 to 12. Remember, we're in drop D flat. And again, I can't stress the importance of the wah pedal to kind of enhance the sound of alternate picking legato. It just takes it to another level. So pivoting from Mark's lead guitar playing to his rhythm guitar playing, he is a really great songwriter, and I think it shows in the sense that he takes generally basic chord progressions that you wouldn't have too much trouble sort of coming up with by themselves. Like, okay, I'm in drop D, there's only so many different combinations that sound cool, and you know sometimes those are repeated among different bands, but the difference with Mark's uh, composition is he has a unique sense of harmonic rhythm. So he may change his chord on a different beat than you normally would. And he utilizes this feel in different ways, whether it's sort of going to a halftime vibe in uh, his pre-chorus sections or verse sections, as well as using open strings to really convey uh, more interesting harmonic progressions than you would get just playing chords. And what I mean by that is there's a lot of single string open riffs happening that sort of have chords interleaved between them. Uh, it's kind of like a metal version of Hendrix, if you will. Uh, so if I were to be tasked with writing a Mark Tremonti style riff, this is what I would come up with. So as you can hear, there's a lot of things on display in that riff, particularly in the very beginning there. So maybe a more basic version of that would be like... But instead, kind of trying to spice it up a little bit by varying the point where the chord changes and also as you may have identified in there, a little major third action, even though we're in this sort of D minor sound, D flat minor. I have this. So that also comes back later on. As you heard. So that would be my take on a Tremonti riff, kind of like a Mark Tremonti light, if you will. So to tie all his rhythm guitar playing together, Mark also used various tunings, like I mentioned, the drop tunings, but also this cool tuning called D5. It's spelled D-A-D-A-D-D, -D -D -D, and essentially it's like a big D power chord. It was all over the early Creed stuff, and it's a really cool tuning. I'm not really that well equipped to show you how to use it, but I think it's sort of a testament to Mark's guitar playing. He really plays a lot by ear, and again, going back to that conversation I had with him about just sitting down and letting the notes sort of go where they will and using your ear to navigate the fretboard, I think that is exactly how you should approach the D5 tuning. So again, it's D-A-D, A-D-D -D from heaviest to lightest gauge, and good luck. Let me know what you come up with. And the last thing I'll talk about regarding the habits of Mark Tremonti 
would be his songwriting style and sort of the way his cleaner riffs come together. He actually employs a finger picking style that I've used for a long time, even before I heard Mark's guitar playing. And it came full circle when, again, I'm referencing that conversation that we had. He was explaining how he writes songs and how he comes up with melodies and things. And it's essentially this droning bass note and that's happening in the thumb. And then the fingers on top are looking for melodies or little dyads or triads. And that is really a great way to write any sort of music. You can adapt that habit straight away. And it's actually probably the simplest finger picking technique that I know because there isn't much variation in the fingers. It's a constant pulse. So if you want to give it a try here, I just have a, an open D sus two chord. <laughs> And another interesting thing you can try is to actually syncopate the rhythms. Still sort of the same concept, but the thumb is doing triplets in the bass instead of quarter notes. So guys, those are the habits of Mark Tremonti, at least as best as I can describe them. He's an awesome guitar player and a really great dude. Definitely check out the new Mark Tremonti signature pedal from Morley. The links are down in the description. Both versions, the big one and the smaller, a dying machine version. Also, you guys learned a lot from this lesson and let me know which guitar player you'd like me to examine the habits of next. Until next time, keep shredding.